Thanks for joining me, my name is Richard Pierce, and uh, this week we're looking at doing the Raspberry Pi arcade machine. So last week we did uh, the, the prototyping, and uh, this week we're gonna look at the wiring for the buttons. Now, I came across a few problems in this, which you'll see, but also I'll let you know what the solutions were as well. Uh, next week's episode, if you want to like and subscribe and get notification of that, uh, will be the final build of this arcade machine. But do stick around for this one, because if you are building an arcade machine, the wiring is very important, as you'd imagine, and understanding the pitfalls and perils that I went through may help you um, a great deal. So here I am working at double speed, installing all the buttons. I mentioned in the last video, in the prototype, what I worked with was a start for each player, four fire buttons. That wasn't the right thing to do. You need a start and select and at least four fire buttons. I went for actually six fire buttons, but you know, that's a long story. The reason why you need that many buttons is because you think about the Mega Drive systems and the Nintendo system and the other consoles that are out there, typically what they'd have is a start and select um, four fire buttons, A, B, you know, X, Y, and then they would have two shoulder buttons on the right and the left. So you have to make sure you have enough buttons to make it all work. So we've got the buttons in. Uh, but now we're going to wire them up first. We're going to put all these uh, micro switches in. We've got the LEDs in as well, but not on the wiring up to this point. Um, these were a bit tricky before, so it's going to take a little bit of time to practice with one all the time ago. Which is fiddly. It was very fiddly. We, what I'm going to do now is put all together the micro switches to the stalks. It's just getting it in there. Just it was quite tricky, sort of pulling the plastic apart. And then the other thing was tricky was actually getting the whole lot into the button because again it had to kind of click into place and it was hard you had to sort of grab all the button at the bottom really give it a big push but we got there and now we're actually beginning the wiring part so what I've done is um, what we're doing here now is actually wiring all the earths together so I've uh, cut several sections of um, black wire and stripped each end and all I'm going to do now is twist those ends together and then insert both of them into a connector and then really tighten it up by crushing it with a special sort of crimper area but the, I found this a little bit tricky in some instances the earth wasn't too bad because the wire was doubled so there's plenty to grab hold of but just making sure it went in it got a good connection it wasn't going to slip out I got through plenty of connectors that ended up getting thrown into the bin so uh, yes yeah, so those little red connectors have plenty of them on hand um, if you're not used to doing them you will end up throwing some away once we have the daisy chain all ready, it's now time to connect it up to the earths. So we start with the first earth, the first micro switch, and start working our way around logically from one earth to the next earth next. And it just daisy chains them all together. Once I finished the earth, I'd wire that into the eye pack. I'd now started on setting up each individual white. Um, cable for individual buttons so they go into each button in turn and then the white wire goes straight to the eye pack and is wired into its corresponding slot there ready to take the input from the button now I actually did this wrong um, there's two slots you could put the white wire into and um, I picked the wrong one and uh, I felt the pain of that for, a, for quite a while It didn't work. So what I'm going to do now is start debugging why that is. Um, so what I've done is gone to the configuration uh, menu. This is where you tell the uh, RetroPie system 
what buttons control sort of which area. So yeah, I'm sort of up, down, left, right, and it's it's taking an entry so it knows what is happening, P and then an the apostrophe. And if I'm pressing start, yeah, Q1, that sort of works. But then I sort of work around the different buttons. I don't have a select, which is, you know, one of my mistakes that I made. But I start pressing the buttons and realize that certain buttons aren't working. Um, and really what I should have done at this point, rather than using the uh, Raspberry Pi to debug it, is just plug the iPad 2 controller into a normal laptop, open up Notepad, and from there I can see exactly what buttons are pressing what. So that was a bit of a lesson learned, which I found out. Um, get a bit frustrated with it there. Um, so the lesson learned was to use a, use a laptop and also reconfigure the iPad as well, which I'll put a link into how to do that. Um, so rather than having very strange keys like control and alt as, as button presses, they're all A, B, C, or one, two, three buttons. So that's what I had to do. So what I'm going to do is look at this uh, micro switch, and there's, there's two things I did wrong. Firstly, I put the the wire that connects the controller to the iPad board into the wrong slot. I put it into NC, which is normally closed, and it should have been into NO, which is normally open the other thing that i did as well when i was wiring up is when you were doing when i was doing the daisy chain it was two wires twisted together which goes into the com section that's the earth and when i did the the normally open button um, it was just a single wire going in and what i found was the thickness of the wire and the connectors that i was using it wasn't making a very good connection so what i had to do is strip a lot more off it um, bend that strip wire in two twist it around and then put it into the connector and that works so so much better and uh, once i've got all them problems ironed out it worked like a dream so thanks for watching um there was a few issues with the buttons and although i mentioned around the the micro switch has not been labeled up correctly there's a few other things that you needed to do first of all you've got to download the ipack software which i'll put a link on screen for you now what you can do with that is link the iPad into your PC, uh, laptop, and then change the configuration of the input. So it's set up when you first buy it to be Alt, Control for certain inputs. Really what you want everything to be is 1, 2, 3, 4, or A, B, C. You've got plenty of characters to work it all out, so you just need to change the ones that you need. The other thing that you need to do in order to get the two-player working with the iPad is to change one of the config files within RetroPy. Now, it's called RetroArc CFG, and I'll put the, of how to get there on the screen. Um, and I use Win SCP program in order to log on to my Raspberry Pi. Again, I'll put a link on here for you. What basically happens is, is the iPad goes in as a controller, and it's very easy to set it up as a one player because through the RetroArc config menu that you can see on screen, and you saw me using it earlier on in this episode, is you can tell it up, down, left, right, what buttons it is, which is fine for player one. So if that's all you're doing, don't worry about it. If you want to go to player two, which I think most people will want to because it is all around that competitiveness of Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, to name but a few, then you'll want to be able to get to two player working. Because RetroPy only sees the iPad as one controller, one keyboard, he doesn't understand that that's two, potentially two inputs coming through that. That's why you have to change the RetroArc CFG file. Now, I did that and I'll, I'll chuck in a few slide shots of what you need to do. It didn't work for me straight away. So what I had to do is reinstall RetroPy, so clear off my SD card, reinstall RetroPy and the ROMs, then follow the steps that I'll, uh, that I'll show you, um, changing that RetroArc CFG, and then it worked fine. So what had happened with me is I'd gone down a bit of a rabbit hole of changing things, trying to get things work, some work, some, you know, it wasn't quite working, but in the process of doing that, I have messed up enough config files in order to stop this from working. So if in doubt, reinstall RetroArch and you'll be absolutely fine. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, next week's episode will be the final build of this arcade machine and that's purely really a woodworking video um, to get it all set up as you can see it. Um, it was a really fun build to, to do. It wasn't actually as complicated as what I thought. I was putting it off, I was a bit worried about it, but it was really quite straightforward. So join me next week and you'll be able to see that.